you explain about the omega-3 and omega-6. So before people used to eat fresh food and they couldn't transport to another country, they will get rotten. So then they start using preservative, which is omega-6. So to transport to another country, cities and events, so it lasts longer. So why do you think omega-3 is important? The omega fatty acids are essential fatty acids, so they're, they're, we can't make them. So they're like fat vitamins. And we, we still don't have a great deal of understanding of these things, but it's now becoming apparent that they do have a profound effect on human health, just as much as a you know, vitamin deficiency, a vitamin C deficiency will cause scurvy, whatever, as mentioned in the book. So deficiency or disruption of the omega fatty acids uh, causes human disease uh, and we think well certainly it's set out in the book that it causes you know, western inflammatory diseases um, such as asthma you know um, arthritis inflammatory bowel disease that sort of thing but also obesity and so there's two fatty acids there's one which is called omega-3 and one that is called omega-6 and omega-3 um, comes from you know, green leaves green vegetables and goes into animals that eat green leaves and green vegetables. So cow, a cow so that's um, grass-fed will have a lot of omega-3. Algae in the sea uh, obviously have a lot of omega-3 as well. It comes from chloroplasts from the sun. Um, so fish have a lot of omega-3, so fish is really good as well. Now, omega-6 comes from nuts and seed oils, and the recent industrialization of food means that actually those nuts and seed oils have been nuts and seeds have been used in oils. In the book, you explain how they derive oil from nuts and seeds, what the process it goes. It's amazing. me. I thought, I used to love nuts and seeds oil and like sesame oil and stuff. But the way you explain in the book, the process of actually extracting the oil, it put me off of all the vegetables oil <laughs> and seeds and nuts oil. Should, I mean People don't realize, people have been told that it's like a oh, great, uh, great natural food, vegetable oil. Um, but it's not, it's a totally artificial human food um, that's produced by, you know, high, highly refined. It's like, it's, it's like, you know, gasoline. It's the same sort of refinery process that you need for, for petrol. Um, so, you know, a lot of different temperatures, a lot of chemical treatments um, for us to be able to eat you know, cotton seeds. Cotton seeds yeah. are not human uh, human food. Um, so this is outlined in the book. And you know what the omega six actually does to us when it sort of it gets into our into our bodies at a much higher ratio than omega three is mm -hmm. it does cause you know, problems with insulin, um, uh, uh, seeing insulin, and also inflammation. And both of these things cause in the long term obesity. Really amazing. You explaining in details about omega-3 and omega-6 because people think that omega-3 only in fish uh, i asked you people and i said do you think omega-3 in uh, vegetables or in the kale or in cucumber and then everyone who i asked they said are you mad omega-3 in a vegetable there isn't any omega-3 not many people would believe they would look at me and thinking she doesn't know where's omega-3 <laughs> so it's in all fresh vegetables so omega-3 causes uh, foods to oxidize quite fast so um, you know, oxidation if you leave it out in in the air it will go it's like an apple that goes brown um, so foods that have got a lot of omega-3 i mean you can imagine fish if you leave it out for a day it's going to go off basically whereas omega-6 is very stable so you know if you leave peanuts out, they've got a lot of omega-6 in them. They're very stable, you leave them out, uh, they don't oxidize and they go off. So omega-6 containing foods are really good for, for processing. They're really good for you know being on the shelf for six months or a year. Um, and we sort of don't realize, you know, when we go out and buy, you know, processed foods, maybe a pack of crisps or whatever, that it's probably been, you know, it's been on the shelf. It may not seem that dusty but it's been on the shelf maybe for six months or nine months um, if you left these you know, packets of biscuits and whatever out let them gather dust um, and then said you want one of these do you want this it's just like nine months old do you want this um, people wouldn't eat that they would say no that's yeah awful. explain about cholesterol cholesterol it's it's not that bad as people think because 
every single cell in our body is made up of cholesterol. And people think the cholesterol is really bad. To do the diet plan and they receive their blood test, the biochemistry blood test, and the medication, they will have about eight to ten different type of medication at age of 36 or 35 and I'm thinking why why there will be cholesterol obviously and if it's cholesterol just 5.8 it's not much and for some people that's they genetic that's my normal uh to have 5.8 but this is doctor said to me to take uh statins and you explain about statins as well in the details pharma how it all works that's amazing absolutely amazing can you say about cholesterol and statins please I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in the medical con community on, um, you know, the danger of cholesterol. Well, the, re the relationship between cholesterol containing foods and heart disease, and there's never been proven to be a direct link between, you know, saturated, natural saturated fats like red meat and cardiac risk. Um, we know that people with uh, hereditary really high cholesterol levels, so hypercholesterolemia occurs in one in 500 people, they they do get heart disease. Um, so, and they get heart disease very early in their 40s and 50s, and they have to be on statins and, 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 and you know, be monitored. But they're quite, that's quite a rare condition. But that was the initial sort of spark of interest in this relationship between cholesterol and cardiac disease, this like rare condition, hereditary condition. We also know from the historical research that if you eat a lot of cholesterol containing food, the cholesterol in your bloodstream will go up a little bit transiently. You know? So the scientists historically, this was in the you know, 70s, 60s and 70s, put these two things together. So food can increase your cholesterol a little bit. And um, if you have this hereditary high cholesterol condition, um, you're, you're, you're at risk of cardiac disease. And they put these two th things together to say, okay, well, then food must, co cholesterol containing food must, by you know, due process and logic, cause um, cardiac disease. But actually, when you look into the research into it, the risk is, is pretty small. Um, and I think a lot of those, that risk, actually, as we say in the book, is, is due to the one saturated fat that is actually quite bad, bad which is palm oil, so palmatic acid, um, which sort of infuses itself into Western foods because, you know, it's texturally so good for cakes. And In one of the morning uh, TV shows, I think it was, you said about the palm oil, it's not for human consumption. <laughs> so, is it really? Yeah, exactly. Uh, not in the, the quantities that um, food supply at the moment, so yeah, I don't think it's um, it's a little bit like uh, seed oils, vegetable oils. You know, I don't think they are natural human foods. Whereas saturated fat from dairy products and from red meat, I don't think if you if you looked at that just individually, if you did research on that individually, I don't think that would show a significant cardiac risk. I mean, we look at you know hunter gatherer tribes, um, the Maasai tribe, which only eat meat and drink blood and milk, um, they don't have a high rate of cardiac disease or obesity. So milk is not as bad uh, and the fat from the dairy is not as bad as people think then? No, I think full fat milk is uh, probably something that's going to actually protect you from becoming obese you know, because uh, fat doesn't cause obesity. You know? Again, a misconception that because fat you know, has slightly more calories per, per Per unit volume than carbohydrates, then that's going to make you fat. It, do, it, it doesn't make you fat. It makes you feel you know, satiated and full for a long time. And fuller for longer. Your carbohydrates, you feel full transiently, and then you feel starving about an hour later because your, your insulin sort of has gone down and back up. You explain in the details about the insulin, plus, you talk about the insulin on one of the TV shows. Uh, I watched um, on the YouTube, yes. so people can watch as well, uh, about the insulin. Uh, you also talked about the studies in the details, because I don't believe every single study, because each study can predict each other. You explained about alcohol. The amount of alcohol Russian people drink is just, they are number one. <laughs>